Hello, this is Chris Pratt from Eurogamer, and we're back again with Total War Warhammer 2. I'm joined by Rich from Creative Assembly. Hi there, everyone. Who's going to help answer a few questions along the way. Well, a lot of questions, actually, because one of the things I'm really impressed by, I've had a little play already, is even after all the races that you've added to mm -hmm. uh, the Warhammer campaign maps at this stage, like, this one plays completely differently. Like, completely differently. <laughs> well, that's what we look to try and achieve. When we get to, like, the way that you purchase units and the upkeep, um, mm. They're weird, and I like them. Um, <laughs> should we have a quick talk about the legendary lords? To yeah, begin let's with? go for it. Uh, to begin with, there are, there are four of them this time. So you, instead of having, as you have in the past, with like the wood elves and beastmen, when you've had a mini campaign yes. in the edition, yep. um, this time you've, you've opted to go for more legendary lords and cut back on the, the mini campaign stuff. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of people were saying that they just wanted more stuff for the, the main campaigns. And the fact that now we've got two main campaigns, essentially, you know, Mortal Empires and the Great Vortex campaign, uh, th these Four legendary laws will be in both of those campaigns for you to play around with. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are going to be in exactly the same location, so obviously Setra, he'll be in Kem Kemri, whichever campaign that you embark upon. Sure. But then other people are going to be in slightly different locations. So a good example of that would be Kalida. Um, she starts out in uh, Lustria if you go and play the Vortex campaign. Right. Because she's got that sort of affinity with going and getting rid of the vampires, and of course the vampire coast resides there on the mm -hmm. northeast corner, so she's got some work to be done there. But in the Mortal Empires campaign, she's actually back in her home set settlement of uh, Liberas, so right. she's got some nice different battles there. Yeah, we're going to have a look at the the Eye the Vortex campaign through, through the lens of the Tomb Kings here. Um, and one thing I should also point out is there's also another new legendary lord for <laughs> Skaven, she's going to be a, like, a and is a free DLC. Yeah, he's a free. He's alongside a the. Absolutely. Tombings. So everybody's going to get Tretch Craven Tail to play around with, and Can he's, I just, he's got some really cool he's got things. Some to great play bits here. and pieces. The fact that uh, his public order goes up when, when, when you break a diplomatic treaty, yeah. <laughs> that is like the most Skaven backstabbing trait I've, I've I ever know. seen. And a um, lot of people here have been, you know, playing through the campaign, having a lot of fun, fun with that. Um, he also has the ability that his guys can run away in, ba in battle a, yeah. bit, a bit quicker and then they come back again. So yeah, that sounds proper great. scathing through and through. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like that. Okay, so if we quickly go through the uh, the Tomb King's mm. uh, roster. So we've obviously got Cetra the Imperishable, who's sort of the, the lead figure in, in the Tomb Kings. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, eventually rides his... Uh, chariot of the Gods. Infamous Chariot, yeah. Mm. Um, but we've also got... I, I quite like the, the different... Backgrounds of the four, mm. four legendary lords here. So we've got um, Katep, is that what you That's it? right, yeah. Uh, this is the guy that actually woke up the Tomb Kings uh, initially, right? Yes, yeah, and so he's not in Setra's good graces because yeah. Setra thought he was going to be reawakened to a, like a, almost like a paradise. Yeah. And it certainly isn't that. Sort uh, of, yeah, a bit crumbly. Yeah, so he's actually been banished, mm -hmm. basically exiled, away from Setra as far as we could possible basically yep. so he's up in the um, the reaches of uh, Nagaroth there's a there's another desert up there so he's essentially there biding his time looking to try and find elixirs of life things that can he can come back and he's present to his team to fix everything <laughs> yeah really doesn't like dark elves it's worth no, as well. no. Uh, so we go over to Kalida who we mentioned <coughs> before um, now she's a sort of pleasing uh, legendary lord with uh, she called the Viper Queen, is that right? Or yeah, like in, yeah. Like informally and known. Yeah, and in, 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 in her law, you know, she comes to the Tomb King's uh, need when 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 necessary, mm -hmm. um, and she's got this bitter uh, running fam family tiff with uh, Neferata. Yes. Um, so her sister actually was the first of the vampires. Mm, is that yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's got a sort of. So there's yeah. a bit of a vampire connection going on here mm -hmm. and things that she has to do in the campaign. And speaking of the vampire counts, mm. uh, Archon the Black here is perhaps the most unusual of the four because, mm -hmm. like, so, th so this guy was exiled, but this guy really, yes. really has uh, yeah, gone down a different path. But uh, he, he's just, you know, he plays both sides, mm -hmm. but obviously his, you know, grandmaster is... Uh, Nagash. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So he sort of buys his time, looks for opportunities to come back. How can he disrupt the world? How can he bring about his master's return? Um, and, you know, with Nagash's, you know, being essentially the godfather of vamp vampires as well, we've given Arkan here the ability to have some, you know, nice vampire related content as well. Yeah, so you can actually have there's a few units from the Vampire Counts roster he can yeah. recruit. That makes 
Is that the only legendary lord to have units across two Dual, yes. uh, races so yeah, far? Yes, yeah. at the moment, yeah. And yeah, interestingly, like you can see, uh, like has improved diplomatic relations with the vampire counts, but the tomb kings hate him. Uh, yeah, they're, they're not so keen on and him. And also here, um, so this is worth knowing actually in terms of how uh, the tomb kings approach corruption. They actually uh, use, they're on the sort of untainted side. That's right, um, yes. They don't use vampiric corruption, f except for this guy mm -hmm. who, um, yeah, can his uh, region can be sort of invested with vampiric corruption. It doesn't yeah. doesn't matter because he's sort yeah, of that's somewhere it. in between. That's yes. All right, cool. Well, yeah, plenty to look at there. I think we'll go with uh, Setcher the Imperishable because I'm the most vanilla player of all time and tend to go for like... Oh, he's a great choice. I'm a Tyrion yeah. fan, I'm a Cole Friends fan. Like, yeah. I, <laughs> if you put him on the box, like, uh, I tend he, to he, he, he looks great and, you know, when you get him on the Chariot of the Gods, he certainly packs a punch nice. in battle. Okay, so we'll... I'll get, we'll let the intro cinematic play out now and then mm -hmm. rejoin you on the campaign map. The sands of time ravage all. Mortals, monuments, even civilizations cannot stand against it. Their remnants lost beneath the dunes, awaiting discovery by the brave or foolish. What's that? I can hear something. Come here, quiet. Like time itself, the living are not welcome in Nehekara. For this is the land of the dead, ruled by the tomb kings where only the expired may serve. In life, they were tyrants, now cursed with undeath. They crave power more than any living thing. And none more so than Setra, the Imperishable. Eternity was promised, but the Tomb Kings awoke to unlife, no longer beatific sovereigns. Their kingdoms as decayed as their bodies. The glory of Kemri lost, forgotten. Black Pyramid stirs, but does not wake. A vessel of untold power awaiting a new master, but it remains sealed. The Lich Priests are tasked with finding access. They venture deep into the catacombs, seeking clues. Discovering an obelisk inscribed with hieroglyphs as old as the desert gods. The answer lies in the nine books of Nagash, the original tomes of undead lore, authored by the arch necromancer. Due to the turbulence of the vortex across the ocean, not nine, but only five books are needed. Then, the pyramid shall open. Time has seen the books lost, scattered. Other tomb kings will seek them, for all desire the Black Pyramid. Begin the search. Raise your warriors. The legions of Khemri 
march to war. the imperishable, king of kings, lord of the shifting sands, eternal ruler of mankind, rest no longer. Mehekara will be restored to greatness. Savage greenskins threaten to raid my lands in the east. They have defiled my temples before. I shall ensure their extinction. More godless orcs dwell in the mountains to the south. But a much greater threat squats within my kingdom. The Necratch Brotherhood leech upon my realm. A parasite that must be purged. But they are all mere distractions. I hunger for more. The power of the Black Pyramid it stands, guarded by a sentinel army, and behind magical bonds that can only be unraveled by owning books of Nagash. The books shall be mine, and so will the pyramid, for I am Setra the Imperishable. I do not serve, I rule. Cool, well. Here we are back in with uh, the Tim Kings there. So yeah, interestingly, they, they're they not that fussed about the whole Vortex race going on on the other side of the world. They've no. got their own stuff to deal with. Yeah, we absolutely wanted to tell their own story, why why they're so special, and mm -hmm. I guess why they're so loved by so many people. And we thought, as much as the Vortex is, you know, a super cool mechanic, which yeah. was in Warhammer 2, this just gave you us... You didn't need to force it. No, so. this just gave us the breathing space to sort of tell tell the Tomb Kings in you know, the story who they are, what's really important to them, and in particular of Cetra, it's all about, you know, bringing back civilization, bringing back, you know, his former glories, because he's woken into this world of ruin and, 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 and disorder, sand, basically. Yeah, lost of sand. <laughs> cool. I have a couple of questions about that, uh, really quickly. So the, um, the other races in the game uh, that typically are chasing after the Great Vortex, mm -hmm. I'm right in thinking they're not doing that if you're playing the Tomb Kings, that, that uh, so they're they're still they're still playing the game. Sure. So, you, so you'll still see the ritual enactments. Yeah. You'll see you know the streams come, coming across across the skies. Right. Um, and if you go after the ritual sites, then they're obviously going to want those as well. So you can have a bit of a, a nice struggle struggle for those. But you can't lose because one of them has completed the ritual. You can't lose from, okay. it, from it. Yeah. No. And uh, another question is if you play say as the high elves who mm -hmm. in the great vortex campaign they are the other vortex campaign they are going after that. Yeah. The tomb kings obviously going to be present in that campaign, but they won't be uh, chasing after like Vortex objectives in the same no, way. They'll just be expanding. They're just there to en uh, enrich your camp campaign and give you a different you know, uh, thing to uh, uh, ally with or fight against. Sure. Alrighty. Well, I guess uh, yeah. there's so much to talk about here. I think, should we start off with going after a... Um, I think we'll, we maybe do our first battle and then come back and yeah, talk right. in detail. Because yeah. like, the, on the campaign map, there's <laughs> just... Uh, there's oodles of stuff. Lots of stuff. Okay, so yeah, we've got Cetra here with a couple of units of skeleton warriors um, who are, like, yeah, as I said, like meat shield infantry, really... They're very basic. They're, yeah. you know, the, the grunts of the army. These guys, however, are not. They're uh, more advanced. Yeah, they're uh, pretty decent, sort of mid-tier mid, mid -tier unit. Mm -hmm. We've got an early chariot here, which is nice because our boy Cetra doesn't have his yet. Um, Although, obviously, if we go on to the... Oh, I said I wouldn't get <laughs> lost in this. We'll, we'll come back. We'll come back, <laughs> I promise. Um, and mo most importantly, we've got this War Sphinx, which is basically going to win this fight for us, I it, think. Cause yeah, he's epic. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to take this first settlement up here, owned by Greenskins. And, yeah. Uh, yeah this that. should be a good, a good scrap. The, Sav the Savage Orcs are pretty decent at the... Uh, combating the, the basic Tomb King, King roster. When you get into the bigger 
constructs and stuff for sure that um, Team Kings will get the edge. But uh, uh, early game, Savage Orts a you know, decent opposition. Sure. Okay, so we'll get set up here. Um, as we've got no range units and they have a couple, we're probably going to mm -hmm. want to be uh, pushing forwards pretty uh, quickly. Thanks, we've got uh, chariots here. Let's have a quick mm -hmm. link. Yeah, they, those guys are going to be quite important for us. Uh, the Tomb Guard, actually, I might set them up in the middle. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they can actually hold their own compared to my skeleton warriors. Yeah, they're going to be decent. They're probably going to fall over quite quickly. <laughs> uh, we'll put Setra with them. And then the War Slinks here. This thing is just like it's unbelievable. It's colossal, oh, isn't it? Maybe get stuck going quite there as far backwards. Yeah, <laughs> I think I showed how big it was quite well there by the fact that I couldn't. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it's, it's, massive. Up it's got a whole bunch of tomb going on the back of it. Yeah. I don't think these things can be. Uh, can they be mounts for some Tomb Kings? Is yeah, right? yeah, so the actual Tomb King, the uh, the generic Lord, he can have one of these as a mount. Nice. And um, Cetra can also have one as well. Um, but Cetra then has the Chariot yeah, of the Gods chariot. as you know, his fi final mount option. Uh, and let's see what else do we need to... Uh, yeah, he's got this incredible ability which uh, explodes around him but doesn't affect friendly troops. So really good to get him in the middle of people. Absolutely. Once he's got his Chariot as well, that's... What, really yeah, useful. when you use those in tandem, you can crash and bash yeah. all you like. And then uh, this thing up here is quite interesting, uh, which is the Realm of Souls meter, which, as you can see, basically fills up as our units die, or just uh, units die in general. Yeah, so the idea here was to bring about the law in that the Realm of Souls is, you know, the place where all the, the dead, dead warriors of Nekahara have basically... Uh, gone to. So we wanted to have a, a battle side mechanic whereby it could sort of make use of those souls. So as, as your, as your uh, skeleton warrior, skeleton spear, all the basic kind, kind of units are dying, that bar is going to start filling up and at certain strategic points it will start to replenish and resurrect troops. Yes, yeah, and, and that just sort of triggers automatically as That's it hits right, those. That's right, yeah. Uh, which is really, yeah, I, I think it gets more powerful, is that right? As it, yeah, it as does. It gets up. And then at the very final uh, point you can summon an um, Yeah, which are really, <laughs> really hard uh, infantry units. Yeah, they're great. They okay. can come in and do some. This looks really dangerous that I'm, my war slings <laughs> is, just, is just galloping off ahead. However, it's so hardy. It's ridiculous. I, I, He's I, tough. I'm not worried about uh, him at all. I'm slightly worried about my skeletons, which have a, a great charge bonus, but then sort of uh, might want to yeah, keep get, pushing get, out. Get, get around, swing them back. back because in. these. Like, as the Savage Orcs, you know, these infantry really don't mess around. So let's just do that and then hit back again. And uh, my war stinks over there is just mm. having a wonderful time. He is, out in the desert. Yeah, surrounded by Orcs and <laughs> completely disrupting the line as well, which is great. Um, looks like I've almost got that. We'll do one more hit. And I think that's really, really useful to... I'm pointing at the screen here, which is, which is good for the yes. video. Um, <laughs> So to be able to send the war slinks in there and just really mess things up oh is yeah, great because then disrupt. my units are actually quite slow in the background. Sort of ensures that uh, by the time etc. and his pals turn up. That's it. That's it. I mean, he's caused really car position. carnage. So my chariots did a, a brilliant job of those acts of retreat. Now off. if we can just smash through the, uh, the archers here, I think... Such That's a pretty good start. Yeah, Setch is going to get in there and about to use his ability. Oh, yes. So. Let's do that. Oh, <laughs> it's great. So much disruption. Oh, yeah, I think you've uh, given his, his gen general a bit of a, a, bit of a, a shake down there. I think I might actually swing my war slings into these guys now. Because although they're uh, missile infantry, because they're orcs, doesn't actually stop them from being pretty good in no, melee. They're all right, aren't they? They're they're, they're pretty pretty all rounders. Yeah. So I could just bound into those guys. That'd be great. I'm worried about these my chariots. <laughs> uh, fairly long cooldown on the ref of uh, Petra there, which is probably fair enough. <laughs> yeah, it's a good it's a good a good ability though. You know, if, if Setra does ever get tied down, he can certainly use it to get get his way out of trouble. Yes. As well. Oh, that's a really good point because yeah, actually. Allowing, like, creating an escape route. Definitely. Uh, just keep being really annoying here. Just swing our war slinks mm. back into the other. 
Arabois. Yeah. Things are just going really, really well, if I'm honest. Pretty good. <laughs> So yeah, you've not suffered too many losses. I mean, the bar, of the Roman size bar is growing, but um, unless you lose a few more skeletons. Oh yeah, so that is de that's only deaths of my units that rank yeah, for Roman right. Okay, yeah. cool, pretty good to clarify that. So yeah, actually quite a nice way of tracking how, how well you're doing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Although you want those bonuses. You do, you do, and then when, and then when you get the Ubshapti, certainly like if you're in a larger scale battle, it's that choice of, oh, when, when, when do you want to use it? You know, play it too soon, maybe don't quite maximize your, uh, Combat potential. Yeah. Uh, we just got a couple. Of the arrow boys are holding on grimly. God, but not against look, the war. Look things. how much damage he's taken. It, it's yeah. been for this entire battle in the thick of just what looked like really dangerous situations, and it's it's, it's really a beast. Like, yeah. <laughs> and we're, we're just sending Setra over to help it. Um, whilst the, my, the rest of my army, maybe we could just barrel into their leader there. I mean, one of the things that the Tomb Kings will, you know, struggle with if you're, you know, starting your campaigns out is things like dwarf things with, you know, um, armor piercing. Yeah. They they do struggle with that. Mm -hmm. um, you're certainly going to need to persevere with your campaign and try and work your way out to having the bigger constructs of things like, you know, the Obshaptis and. War Sphinx is the, um, the skeleton warrior is not going to really cut it. I mean, you're going to have the numbers uh, for sure, yeah. but you know, they're going to struggle in diff different ways. Yeah, so the, um, there's, there's sort of a split down the middle with the Tomb King's units, right? In terms of like mm. half of them are sort of made of bone yeah. and gristle, and the other half is the constructs like the War Sphinx. Yes. Which are sort of like living statues. I don't really know what yeah, you call them. Yeah, yeah. The constructs are essentially. <laughs> I really like how it sounds like a dog. It's, really, yeah. it's actually quite, quite charming. <laughs> <laughs> it's also got a great um, breath kind of weapon as uh, well. Yeah, so yeah. it's not a breath weapon per se. Is like you know you use it as an ability, yeah. but part of it's extended attack cycle. Oh God, it's it's just causing them so many issues. <laughs> 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 and yeah, I think that's us having one. So yeah. Really, uh, didn't quite didn't quite get on the realm, so almost close. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as you didn't need it for this one. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. you know, it would have been would have been nice to show off. But a big, <laughs> but a bigger battle for sure. Yeah. And always good to get a decisive victory when doing the preview video. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you can see there the war sinks, 118 kills. Yeah. Um, the chariot did really well. Actually. Yeah, we've you know we've we've certainly looked at trying to um, make those a much more mm. uh, formidable thing for the team team kings. Yeah, that's great. And yeah, they, like but had had they got trapped in combat, um, I was quite yeah fortunate as I managed to pull them out and keep charging back it's in. Got to be a bit mic micro with them. Yeah, if they get trapped. They really do lose that. Okay, so we have occupied the salt plain. We've got something called. Uh, Canopic jaws, jaws, which we need to talk about, and yeah. we've just got quite a lot to cover on the campaign map now. <laughs> so where to begin? Should we begin actually with the fact that, say I want to build mm. up this army a little bit, which I probably do at this stage. Yeah. Well, this is interesting. It doesn't look like they cost me anything. They don't. <laughs> they don't. Because they're, uh, you know, fall, fallen warriors, these souls which can just be, you know, resurrected from the Lich Priest. They are free. Mm -hmm. So Tomb Kings, not a single unit costs you any money to recruit or any money to up, upkeep, which makes them totally new and unique in that regard and quite a departure from most total yeah, war factions. definitely. So th there's a, a couple of things that count against that. Um, you can see with these more advanced units like the archers and the, the chariots, I have a cap on how many of those I can use. That's right. A cap can be increased if I uh, build basically the sort of the chariots building in, in yeah. another city. Yeah, that's, that's right. So what we're trying to do is incentivize the idea of going out and um, con conquering new, new settlements, new lands, taking back what the Tomb Kings have lost. So mm -hmm. each time you take a new city, you can construct the same barracks building uh, in each one of those cities, and that will increase the cap. You yep. also see within the chain as well, as you climb up the chain to the higher levels, some of those buildings will also provide you with additional cap there as well yeah. for some of those units. Right, got you. Yeah, so that's that's worth knowing. And yeah, the the reason I could get the arches then is because this building had open graves. That's um, right, yeah. And yeah, I think I'll just we've got plenty of stuff to to go through here. As you said, all the um, some sort of recruitment structures have this uh, cap to, to yeah. think about. 
So one thing, so because they don't cost you anything, mm -hmm. Tomb Kings don't really have so much money in their system either. So yeah, you can see by the income there, actually. Yeah, so you're going you're gonna to see that, you know, trade agreements, as much as you can do them, they're not going to provide you ton, tons of cash. Mm -hmm. um, sacking and looting is going to provide you some, some income, not a, not a ton. The uh, economical building there, just to your right. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, 15 Again, income. very wow. small. So, you know, we really wanted to have this idea that you're bringing about these uh, fallen warriors rather than playing around with money. Building an, you an know. economy, yeah. God, yeah. I've just come off the back of a High Elves Mortal Empires campaign, so like, seeing my income that low is, is scary. I'm not, not happy about this <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've just added that uh, a mortuary house because, yeah, it'd be good. We still rely on growth and want to, to you know, expand yes. this. The, the, this stuff does cost money. So it's basically, this is yeah. where we spend all our money is on structures, for the, really. Predominantly, but. yeah, you're gonna spend, spend it here. Um, you're going to spend it in some of our other areas of the game, uh, like the, the Mortuary Cult, which oh, is our, yes. our crafting system. Yeah, look at this. So Legions of Legend, that mm -hmm. sounds like the regiments of renown, but in fact, I think Tomb Kings have their own version of that so, as well. Right? So yeah, so these are regiments of renown, but on another level. Right. So these are campaign exclusives. Okay. So we've done essentially what we did in Norska, where we've given you, I think it's four new units here. Um, they've all got some super duper abilities mm -hmm. and, and stats on, on them. And as you're going through your campaign, you're going to be, you know, building up some money. You're going to be collecting canopic jars, which is the secondary currency for Tomb Kings. Yeah, you can see um, all these things here. I, I really like that some of these uh, things, like say, mm -hmm. uh, if I wanted to build uh, this weapon here, mm -hmm. um, requires the canopic jars, as you mentioned, but also iron. So actually mm. resources and controlling them or trading with them is important. It feels a bit almost uh, civ-like in that respect, yeah. which is kind of nice. Well, we, we kind of felt that we started on the path of a sort of RPG-esque, you mm -hmm. know, with the skill trees, and where could we take it to a higher level? And the trade resources have been around in Total War franchise for quite some time yeah, now. Yeah. And how best could we use them again? And the mortuary cult in the Tomb King lore is very much about sort of creating elixirs and dabbling in magic and formulating weird and wonderful things. So this seemed like a good place to bring that all together. It's interesting that to, um, the, the, I think there are two different ways to improve army capacity. One of them is to pay here, which is really expensive. Yes. It doesn't sound it for other factions, but for <laughs> us, that's a fortune. It's a lot, it's a lot. Um, so for the time being, actually, I can only have uh, Cetra. That's right. But that is sort of offset by the fact that once you get a new army, you can fill it so quickly and without spending any money. Yes. That sort of, you've had to limit the Tomb Kings in I that mean, respect. I mean, yeah, if you think you're, at the moment, you've got uh, three units there com com coming in yep. per turn, you're going to get to a full 20 step very quickly. Definitely. Um, right, what else do we need to look at? Oh, let's look at the... Uh, the dynasties? The dynasties, which is sort of the equivalent of the research for yeah. uh, the Tomb Kings. However, it's sort of, sort of like the idea that you're, you're researching the, the past of... You're learning from yeah. your ancestors, yeah. basically. And in fact, you, it, once you, uh, say you finally manage to research the wisdom of the first dynasty here, which takes 15 turns, it's no small feat, mm -hmm. you can then actually recruit a Tomb King from that yeah. dynasty. Yeah, absolutely. And, that's, and as you can see here, uh, that would after this 15 turns, I'll get another army capacity and be able to bring in sort of a famous character from the Two Kings past. That, that's right. So there's six dynasties to choose from. You can choose to start on any which one that you fancy. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got the choice if you look around the different characters you can unlock. You've got um, different uh, campaign boosts at the bottom as well, yes, which yeah, costs yeah. cost you money. Um, this is also the place where you, not only do you unlock armies, you can unlock heroes as well. And you'll see that each dynasty has been slightly uh, changed up in, in what comes in which order. So some dynasties you're going to be able to get a Tomb Prince sooner, some you're going to get a Lich Priest. Mm -hmm. So lots of different things to play around with there. Um, yeah. And then real end game stuff, once you've managed to research each of the six dynasties, you can then uh, unlock Heralds, which, mm. um, yeah, as you can see there, they're actually followers, but really substantial ones. Correct, yeah. So we wanted to get the, the heralds in, into the game um, in some capacity, and we thought having them as a follower where you could essentially, you know, they are there to sort of buff the armies in the, ta in the tabletop. This is a good, good way in which you can um, create that sort of unique flavour for each one of your armies and give them one of these super yeah, well, powerful buffs. That's cool. All right. Well, yeah, plenty to delve into there. Um, but yeah, I'll, I don't think we're going <laughs> to see through an entire start, research. Start there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what else do we want to look at? So we've got some new rights, if you want to look uh, at those. Ah, yes. And so these are quite fun. Uh, 
We'll go left, left to right. So uh -huh. this one uh, recruits a casket of souls, which is a really decent uh, artillery unit. Super powerful. Yeah. Um, um, so that's a great unit to have. Uh, really opens up, you know, different avenues when you go in, in, into battle. Looks <laughs> looks spectacular. Um, sort of on its mound of bones and, <laughs> and craziness. So yeah, very uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, nice. Uh, we've got a hero unit here, which is the Necrotect, which I, I believe is an architect who specialises in is. necromancy. <laughs> yeah, so, he, so he's the, the master sculptor, basically. Yeah. He's the guy who's controlling all of the um, constructs, but he's also in charge of sort of whipping people into shape to construct the great pyramids and temples. Mm. And this particular character, once you unlock him, he's got the ability to go and find a ruin ah, and, and colonise it. And colonize it, but to level three. Wow, okay. Right, so yeah. So it's super worth powerful. holding on to that until you, you actually uh, yeah, need to take a ruin. This one I think is my favourite of the four, which is all, really, all regions belonging to you basically get hit by sandstorms, yes. which the Tomb Kings are immune to, yeah. um, but obviously other races won't be. And then within that, you get access to an army ability called Sandvale, which hides your units yeah. within the sandstorm. And the nice thing is we've got um, a visual representation for this as well. So when you, when you use this right, you will see the deserts just right, covered in these large wow. sandstorms. Wow. So yeah. Cool. Uh, so that's like if you're if you're really under attack and you need to, yeah, push back. This is the the one you want to be using then. It's very useful. And then finally, we've got uh, this gives Canopic Jaws generation for a number of turns. Big growth on the provinces and uh, army ability called Tomb Swarm. Yeah. So the Tomb Swarm is um, a, basically a tar pit unit from the uh, the table tabletop, and we really wanted it in the roster, but not. As a unit, yeah, because you don't really have swarm units. In, yeah, in that, be, yeah. We kind of felt that if it, that was to be in as a unit, would you really take it? Because you've already got kind of meat shieldy tar tar yeah. units. Um, but for completeness's sake, we thought it'd be a great way to add it as an arm, army ability. And mm -hmm. essentially, you're going to see, yeah, scarabs coming out of the earth, uh, disrupting and damaging uh, the enemies that you use it on. Nice, cool. Well, they they sound fun. Uh, we can see here that we've got uh, a. Um, skill point for Cetra, so yeah, God, it's plenty to take in here as well. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole Oh, does he resurrect stuff. there? What's that? Mm. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah, obviously, yeah. Sort of an, a, an improved version of Reanimate, is that right? Yeah. Which so you get about halfway through. Yeah, he's got a bun bunch of stuff relating sort of to all sense. his units. Um, you've also got in here the ability to generate more Canopic Jars a turn, so if you want to like um, ah, yeah. make, make use of the Mortuary Cult, then you can get your characters mm. to generate more of those for you as well. Nice. Okay. And yeah, some more advanced stuff up here. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the mounts, we've got the Charity of the Gods uh, at rank 19. Oh, there's just so much. There's lots of nice little yeah. play things. So yeah, he can basically be, sort of be specced as uh, sort of melee focused or magic or somewhere in between. Yeah, because he he's a low level caster, so so mm. he does he does have um, you know access to that, but he's certainly no like Katet in that regard. Right. Yeah. Or 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 Arkin. Arkin's a, a monster. Really. All right, and uh, I guess finally we should also uh, talk about the, so as we said, they're not after the Great Vortex, they're mm. instead after the five books of Nagash, which this is actually the map here uh, of the New World, and you can see where they're positioned. Um, so we've got, I guess the closest one would be down here, yes, if you if you uh, at the Lost Plateau. If you double click, or yeah, there you go. So it's just denoted there. So. So we want to occupy that settlement to get one. Some of them are yeah. quest battles, though. Some of them are destroying yeah, that's certain right. lords. So we've we've like we've reused um, rogue armies as the feature for Warhammer Two. So they've got some really unique um, armies which will patrol patrol around the map, and you'll mm -hmm. have to go and engage with them. So this should be some good uh, tough fights there. There's some great rewards as well for each one of these. Yeah, perks. sure. So you can you pick them basically on based on where they are. And Relation to you, but also what rewards you you want to get from them. Absolutely, and we randomise what those rewards are. Ah, so, okay. so each time you play through, as much as the locations will be the same, or you might come across that um, rogue army in a different patrol patrolling area, mm -hmm. it will substitute all the different effects around. So you might find that 
lost plateau on one occasion might give you a large amount of canopic jars. On another occasion, it might be army capacity. Okay. It really uh, changes around. Um, all nine books are in the campaign. Mm -hmm. um, Arkin starts with one of them. Um, that's, ah, okay. that's one of his magical items. That's cool. um, but all the other eight are all up for grabs, basically. Mm -hmm. So you need five to complete your victory condition. Yep. But if you wanted to go and get the other, the, the other ones and complete the set, basically, you're free, free to go and do that. Yeah, uh, I don't fancy going for the <laughs> White Tower of Hoef just yet. <laughs> awesome. Um, and another thing just to note is if you play as a different character, mm -hmm. the locations do differ as well. Ah, some, okay. some, some stay the same and some, some get changed up. Right, cool. And then, yeah, uh, to, to win the campaign, we also want to hold the Black Pyramid of Nagash, which is here, currently controlled by um, a group called the Sentinels. So that's a fairly difficult battle to win. It is. That can be quite a challenge. Um, it's certainly not one that you can take on in the first few rounds. Um, as much as it's sort of goading, etc., to go, yeah. to go there, you're best off building your empire and going and tackling the uh, greenskins and other sure. other guys around. But that's not the end of it, even once you. So once you've got those five weeks, you've claimed the pyramid. There's also some kind of final oh, yeah. battle as well. Well, as you know, we always like a yeah. a grand finale. Yeah, so. of course. <laughs> Well, that sounds good. Man, so much taken. Yeah, as I said at the beginning, I just it's really uh, pleasing to see, you know, I, th I don't know how many races uh, Total War Hammer has at this stage, um, but you've got quite a few we got, we got, uh, across we got the two games. Few, yeah. And this one seems to play in a completely different way, particularly on the, um, the campaign map, plays drastically different to, to those that we've seen so far. And I think that's, that's really cool. And um, yeah, as we've, we've said pretty much since the first game, that is one of the, the real standout features of, of uh, the Warhammer mm, the Total War games, I think. And it's, a, it's our absolute aim. Every, every time that you know, we get um, to work on the new exciting project, that's what we, we want to go to straight away. It's like, well, how can we differentiate these guys? Mm -hmm. We don't want any two factions to be and feel the same. And we'll continue to do that. Nice. Cool. Well, I guess we, we can leave it there then. It's a nice little taste of everything uh, the Tomb Kings have to offer. And it was a d decisive victory, so I'm quite happy to <laughs> leave it there on the battlefront. Um, but yeah, interesting race. When are they, uh, they being introduced to the game? So we're coming out on the 23rd of January. 23rd of January, yeah. alongside the, uh, the extra Skaven Legendary Lord yeah. and the Skaven Labs. Yes, yeah, Skaven Labs. Nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little bit of fun, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Making okay. things big and small and crazy. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, we'll look forward to it. Thanks very much, Rich. Thank you very much.